In New Orleans today, hundreds of protesters shut down a main intersection to demonstrate for immigrants' rights. A few blocks away, a federal appeals court heard arguments on whether to lift a ban on the administration's efforts to shield up to 5 million people from deportation. Robert Ray joins us live from New Orleans with the latest. Robert? Uh, David, good evening. Indeed, it was a flurry of activity behind me uh, from the morning all the way into late afternoon. Now very quiet as New Orleans uh, sinks in for the weekend. But as you said, hundreds of people walking the streets around this federal courthouse earlier today. Uh, many people, very peaceful. Uh, in fact, even those that were arrested, the 14 individuals that sat down in one of the middle of the streets here that were arrested, they were peaceful. This was a planned uh, situation. The police knew that this may occur. Uh, there was absolutely no violence at all. And the message from here today, uh, from these uh, many of them undocumented and some documented uh, immigrants were that they want immigration reform in the United States. They're tired of deportations that break apart families, and they want action. We spoke with one of the big-time community leaders here earlier today. Let's listen to what he had to say. It's not citizenship. It's not a path to citizenship. It's just a working permit. So it's like this idea of that it's amnesty, and it's not amnesty. It's just a working permit that will last three years. As you just heard him say, it's not amnesty, it's not a path towards citizenship, it's a work permit. That's something that we heard over and over from the people here today. But you know, there's another uh, place in America that's talking about immigration at a deep level. They've been doing it for years. It's in the North Georgia mountains, Dalton, Georgia, to be exact. Let's have a watch and listen at their struggle. Jaime Rangel came to the U.S. with his parents from Mexico when he was three months old. I'm a Latino that has grown up eating tortillas and grits at the same time, so I've learned from both cultures. But Rangel, a Latino activist in Georgia, is not a U.S. citizen, though he holds a work permit and a Social Security card, thanks to qualifying for President Obama's first executive action on immigration. Here in the South, we get this misconception that I hear that all the illegals are taking our jobs. The illegals here are not doing anything in favor for us. They're just, you know, doing, they're bad for America. But the city of Dalton has benefited from immigrants from all over, especially from Mexico. Immigration has changed the face of Dalton, Georgia. It's a small town in the North Georgia mountains. In the 1990s, thousands of people from Mexico and Central America flocked here to work in the carpet mills. Today, the city calls this the carpet capital of the world, and there are nearly 50% Latinos holding the population. In my view, I think there's a chance the carpet industry could have moved out of the country years ago if they didn't get the labor force in here that they got. Hello, Jaime. How's it going, man? Republican Great. Mayor Dennis Thank Mock you. and Jaime Rangel are working together in Dalton to help bridge cultural gaps in their community of 30,000 people. Well, we've got over 90 nationalities represented in this community, and uh, we've worked with all of them. We continue to work with all of them, and, and it's our obligation and it's our opportunity to assimilate them into our culture and, and their culture into ours and that's that's the direction we need to head. Mayor Mock says his town is in limbo as the back and forth continues over federal action on immigration. I know there are a lot of immigrants that would probably be more active in the community if they knew a clear direction and, and knew exactly what their rights were and I think everybody just waiting for, for the federal government to step up. America Gruner came to the U.S. in the 1980s because there was little work in Mexico. It took her 16 years to receive a permanent residence. She now counsels undocumented immigrants in Dalton, where she says daily life can be a struggle. So many people come because of the same reasons. They want to provide um, uh, a better life for their children or for their families. And now they're escaping um, narco-traffic and um, kidnappings and all that that is happening in Mexico and Central America. Gruner has seen families ripped apart by deportation and says there is a need for more Latino leadership in local government here. We have a lot of people that we have served here in the organization and, and we have even hosted children that are left without any parents and it was an example just one week about 11 children without any parents so we have seen it. <laughs>
Ironically, Dalton and its significant immigration population are in one of the 26 states that are suing President Obama, hoping to block his executive order that would allow nearly 5 million undocumented immigrants in the U.S. a reprieve from deportation. I know a lot of people who are just waiting by the TV or the radio of anything that can come out. Whatever happens, I believe this should have been avoided. You know, and I blame the Republicans and both the Democrats. I blame President Obama when he had power to pass immigration reform, and he didn't. I blame the Republicans because they're doing a lot of anti-immigrant talk and a lot of rhetoric. And while towns like Dalton, Georgia, continue to wait for the politicians and courts, the undocumented immigrants here who drive the carpet industry worry that every time they step out the door, they can be taken away from their families and deported. You can't say that we're a problem. We want to be part of the solution. And I welcome those critics to come to Dawson and see what we've done with the community that we've, that we've built. It is an amazing community and an unexpected community. You know, Georgia uh, being the state that they are ruled by uh, mostly Republicans, or governed, I should say. Uh, you know, the mayor there is actually a Republican, David, and he hasn't taken anything, uh, any sort of uh, uh, criticism toward him from his fellow uh, uh, politicians around the state. Uh, the carpet industry is very important there, and they have really made a, a great example of how a community uh, with in in immigrants from Central America and Mexico uh, can come up and work, though there's a lot of work to be done as we watched. Robert Ray, thank you very much. Joining us now from New Orleans is Congressman Luis Gutierrez, Democrat from Illinois. And Congressman, you and hundreds of other activists were there protesting the Fifth Circuit. Um, did you hear anything? Have you gotten any reports from the hearing this morning that gives you any reason to be optimistic? You had the lawyer, the chief proponent for 26 Republican governors and attorney generals saying, we don't object that the 4.2 million people that can benefit under the president's executive order stay. We think the president can let them stay. What we object to is that they get a work permit. What we object to is that they get any benefits from their stay. I found that just incredible today. In other words, you can stay and you can work and you can pay taxes because we don't object to that. But you won't be protected. Well, you described the, the argument from the proponents as incredible. Did the judges find it incredible? What did you hear them say in reaction to that argument? You know what? I, I, heard, I heard the judges last ask a lot of questions. But you got to understand something, David. These are 26 Republican governors and attorney generals. They didn't go to the L.A. federal court. They didn't come to the one in Chicago. They didn't go to the one in New York. They came to the federal they had a Republican judge, federal judge in uh, Texas. They had two of the three judges were Republican judges today, and they made Republican arguments. We arguing in a court setting all of the ugliness of our immigration debate. So you know what? Here's what I say. We today have made it clear we're ready to take this all the way to the Supreme Court, and it may indeed have to go there, David. Is it your sense that, in fact, this will then be appealed to the full Fifth Circuit? I mean, you sound like you're not very optimistic that this three-judge panel is going to rule in your favor. The next Look. option would be to appeal the entire Fifth Circuit. Yeah. Look, here's what I know. That today we send a resounding message throughout the nation. There are over 4 million undocumented workers, and we have said there are those that are on the side of bringing them out of the shadows, having them go through a rigorous background check, making sure they have American citizen children, making sure they've been here five years and have roots in their community. There are those that think that that is the way to move forward. And then there were the representatives of the 26 Republican attorney generals and governors who said they can stay, they just can't get a work permit. And so what? I think today really means is that we will appeal the case wherever it goes. We will educate our community. Congressman, as you know, Donald Trump has injected the immigration issue with a certain energy over the last couple of weeks because of his um, hyperbolic statements about Latinos. Do you see the conversation politically starting to cut differently now, given such a high-profile Republican would make those remarks? And is that in some, ha some fashion perhaps helping you put this issue in front of so many Americans? Look, Donald Trump, you know, he's a clown, and, but he's their clown, and he's spewing ugly, 
uh, racist comments about the immigrant community and about Mexicans in particular. But listen, I get it. When Donald Trump says Mexican, he means Puerto Rican. He means Dominican. He means Venezuelan. He means all Latinos in this country. And I assure you that that's the offense that the vast majority of the Hispanic community takes in the United States of America to his country. Look, they are moving further and further away from ever obtaining the White House again with these kind of vitriolic comments that go uncontrolled and uncondemned by their own party. Today, we have the lawyers for the President of the United States saying the way forward is to allow those that have been here and established roots in this country that will go through a background check to be able to be free from deportation until the Congress of the United States does its job. You know, Donald Trump, he's going to be in the debates in the Republican Party. He's their problem. He's Fox News's problem. They're the ones that are promoting them. But I'm going to tell you something. Donald Trump is a voter registration machine for the Democratic Party and for the Latino community. Every time he opens his mouth, people register to vote, and it's guaranteed that they will vote next November 2016. It's going to be, let me make a prediction to you, David, it's going to be an early night next November 2016 for the Republican Party as the states begin to cast their electoral ballots for President of the United States. Democratic Congressman Luis Gutierrez from Illinois. Congressman Gutierrez, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.